Hey, I'm Coach Britt, and welcome to my Brain Clubhouse, where today we are going to be discussing more in our um, nutrition and dietary series, all about brain, body, and life health. And today we are covering the topic of fat. So what is the skinny on fat and your brain? You like how we pun that one right there? Um, so why we are talking about this is because your brain actually needs fat. We've been so manipulated over the years by, like we discussed sugar last episode that we, you know, we talked about how the sugar industry paid like something of, you know, $60,000 to Harvard researchers to skew the results that they did on chronic illness that pointed back to sugar being such a strong culprit in, in um, deteriorating health. And they had them kind of point the arrow towards fat. So then we saw this huge fat-free revolution, which was highly processed, food-driven, and it was detrimental to people's health. And we're still kind of stuck there, and our kids are still kind of stuck there. So it's really important that we start understanding fat because our brain needs fat. It actually, your brain actually holds 25% of your body's cholesterol. Um, and we hear the word cholesterol, means you think bad, right? Bad. Oh, we hear, you know, you have high cholesterol. Cholesterol isn't necessarily bad. It's what kind, just like fat isn't necessarily bad. It's in what kind. Um, so your body, your brain actually uses fat to coat it's to, to contribute to the myelin sheath that surrounds the neurons in the brain and body. So fat is essential to help us live our best life and to help our brain function optimally it is an excellent source of energy if it's in the right types and the right amounts um it is a primo nutrient that we we absolutely need to be aware of and it helps us do things like process vitamins efficiently there's certain vitamins that are fat soluble that when when come when they come in contact with fat they transport actually to the body through fat so there's certain things that you should eat with fat um, that will actually help your vitamins be more absorbable. So here's the thing, there's two, there's a few different kinds of fat. So you may have heard the difference between, you know, we have bad fats, we have good fats. Okay, we have some really, really bad fats. Like there's some fats that you just shouldn't touch. And in it was misconstrued in the past where people have thought that all animal products and anything with, you know, cholesterol and saturated fats were bad fats. This isn't necessarily true, and we'll, we'll dig into that a little more, but right now I'm going to talk about what are more of your bad fats. Your bad fats are going to be found in your processed vegetable oils, your trans fats, your fried foods. Now, these oils, like trans fats, exist in so many processed foods, and a lot of these fats are not only like more rancid, they 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 are meant to, they're meant to go solid also at room temperature, which means that they are pumped full of like what we call hydrogenated oils. They're pumped full of hydrogen, essentially air, that makes them solid at room temperature. And this has been an, a detrimental um, change and processing in this type of food, in this nutrient, to our bodies because it's caused these fats that were deemed healthy because they came from vegetable sources to coat the arteries of our body and aside from being pro-inflammation, they are actually blocking our arteries more than those saturated fats from that bacon or that steak. I mean, this stuff is never meant to see the human body. And we created it and we cultivated it in a lab and we put it in multiple quote unquote foods that are processed. We give them to our kids. We eat them on a regular basis. We fry food in them. We fast foods made with them. It's really, really, really dangerous. So that's what we're going to say our bad fats are. As far as fats that your body is going to run off of, you have your omega-6s and you have your omega-3s. And those are the ones we really want to focus on because omega-6s are not bad fats. Um, The problem with our current diet is that we have too many omega-6s to omega-3s. We've really cut down our omega-3 consumption. And omega-6s are more pro-inflammatory. They 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 um they service the body's need to inflame which is a necessary action that it needs to take um however when done too much in excess then we have chronic inflammation which leads to chronic disease you know it helps with blood clotting um necessary function so omega-6s are important they're found in specific oils and animal products and you know nuts and things like that Um, Our omega-3s are a little harder to come by, especially in our 
our current diet for a multitude of reasons. So your omega-3s are going to be found more in things like your some fattier fish, specific um, vegetable sources can be higher in omega-3s. Um, it's They're a little harder to find, especially since we've processed our food down so much. So, <clears throat> you know, we've demonized animal fats so much, but the, the thing is, is that cholesterol is actually helps process vitamin D. So some of the cholesterol in animal products or in some of these foods that had previously been demonized so much have actually been shown. There was one um, study that was shown by the Mayo Clinic to reduce the risk of, of uh, degenerative mental conditions like dementia by up to 35% by people that had higher amounts of cholesterol consumption from processed foods like animal some certain animal products. So what's happened to our our animal products over the course of our evolution and factory farming and soil depletion is that we've changed these animals diets. So instead of them eating a diet that was rich in omega 3s that they were intended to eat such as, you know, your natural grass and and plants, we've instead switched them to a diet that fattens them up faster quicker and makes their meat taste better, right? Which is corn and soy products. And we have pumped them full of these unnatural diets. So not only have we induced unhealthy, um, an unhealthy animal, which is irrelevant to the factory farm meat industry, because they're just going to send them to slaughter before their, their tumors or all these things that are wrong with them actually really affect the meat too much, right? Visibly. Um, but the problem is, is this, the content of this, these meat, aside from the antibiotics that they have to give them to counteract the disease and the sickness that ensues due to the unnatural diet they're being fed, aside from that, they're very high in omega-6 fats. Whereas previously, if you were to go out there and catch a wild deer, not catch, but shoot, hunt a wild animal that was grazing on its natural diet of grass and plants and things like that, the meat of that animal is going to be closer to the fat type, the omega-3 fat ratios of fish, right? So here it's so hard for us to find fish anymore. It's very, it's quite expensive these days and you gotta make sure it's not factory farmed fish, it's wild caught. You wanna make sure it was raised somewhere or found somewhere where the water isn't completely contaminated by minerals and and metals and things like that you know so it's a little harder to find it in our fish but yet we would have it in some of our land animals if we were raising them healthier so a good way to go around that is to find a grass-fed grass-finished animal if you're not out there hunting some of your own meat then find some of that your eggs same thing the eggs even the organic eggs that we find in the store that are organic they're still often fed organic corn and soy. Again, not natural. A chicken's going to want to eat bugs and grass and plants and more bugs and their eggs naturally. If you can find some factory farm or some non-factory farmed eggs from your local farmer or producer who has chickens that graze openly, then you're going to get eggs that have a higher omega-3 content. So you pair this up with adding more, you know, healthy olive oils, avocado and vegetables to your diet with selective meat consumption, you're going to significantly increase your amount of omega-3 fats. Omega-6s are just not hard to find. While they're important, um, they're not hard to find. Our ratio that we consume now, we're supposed to have more of like around maybe a four to one ratio, even a one to one ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s because threes are a little harder to find. Um, And our average diet is at least 16 times to one, 16 to one ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s. So no wonder we're inducing so much inflammation throughout the body and we're not calming that through the omega-3s that have the protective, life-giving qualities that we need. So why is this so important? It is because your brain, again, is connected to everything. Your mental health, your sleep, your ambition, your memory, your focus, your mood. Fat is important and the types of fat that we eat is just one step. If we can take a week and just focus on our fat, the quality and the quantity of healthy fats while snuffing out all the garbage ones that are inflaming our bodies and messing with our brain function, we're gonna see massive, massive improvement in our goals, in our life, and in our ability to think and create on a daily basis.